It's hard to talk about my experiences with anxiety and depression. There's a lot of stigma in our culture, despite improvements in recent years. And there's also a lot of stigma in my family. But by being open here, I hope to feel more connected with you and to provide meaningful information for people who can use it. Being comfortable talking about depression and anxiety is a bit like being comfortable with imperfection. But that's reality, isn't it? Over the years, I've tried many things to help me manage my mental health. Some things a little bit controversial, other things conventional. Of course, I tried prescription medication. Nearly every doctor I've met in the U.S. is eager to prescribe the newest happy pill on the market. I tried many different prescription drugs and suffered through the side effects as long as I could. Of course, I tried natural remedies like supplements and vitamins, diet, and exercise, yoga. I found the most success was stacking amino acids. But the amino acids that worked two years ago don't necessarily work today. It requires constant adaptation. Lately, I've been using the book The Mood Cure by Julia Ross as a guide, and it's been helpful. Of course, I tried psychotherapy, years and years of it, different types of therapists, from counselors to social workers to psychologists, many different approaches too, from hypnotherapy to EDMR, positive affirmations and past regression therapy. I still see a therapist regularly and I'm still working on managing my mental health through behavior modification methodical reflection, dissection, and analysis. And I tried meditation. I even spent 10 days in a silent meditation course, Vipassana. It was a daily practice of sitting perfectly still for 10 or more hours a day. This included sitting through and enduring the physical pain from staying still for so long. Here I learned that suffering is temporary and I am capable of experiencing painful things, both physically and emotionally, without being overwhelmed by them. It was a monumental lesson for me. One of the controversial therapies I've tried was ketamine treatments through injection administered by a licensed psychiatrist. It was strange, it's surreal and expensive, but the articles I read about the treatment were astounding. There's clear evidence that ketamine treatments in mice cause neural pathways to regrow, to reconnect. Brain activity that was physically trapped into trauma patterns suddenly found new pathways. So I had four treatments, and in each one, I lay back in an easy chair, nestled in some blankets, I listened to Brian Eno, ambient music, and lost myself for three to four hours. It took me a few years to really learn how to manage my depression and anxiety. They can be monsters that seem impossible to escape. One of the biggest hurdles for me was learning that managing my mental health had to be a lifelong commitment. There's no other way about it. There's no surgery. Despite the message from pharmaceutical companies, there is no pill to make it go away. There's no aha moment to help me magically get over it. Depression and anxiety, the kind that are more than just circumstantial, are my burden. They're my responsibility to manage for the rest of my life. It's a lesson in working with what you have. Just like this pottery vase I made. Accepting that life 
that we as humans cannot be perfect and recognizing that it takes a lot of work from many different angles to make something imperfect into something beautiful and whole. I am the naked potter.